Okie dokie dokie. Hello, hello. Kevin Douglas, aka Captain Redbeard, Redbeard Productions. Here with a whole bunch of mess in front of me. What the hell is this? Um, this is my camera rig broken down into all its little pieces. Um, you see me carrying around all that. It's, uh, it's all built around this right here. Kevin, why the hell can you eat 12 pounds of crap wrapped around your camera? Uh, I guess I could kind of try to explain as I'm putting it back together. So, I use a Canon R5. Um, got a full frame 8K sensor. Um, I can record 10-bit 422 ProRes externally or uh, I don't know what the file is, compression, it's not ProRes, it's still 10-bit 422 internally or it can record raw 8-bit 8K or 5K on Super 35 crop mode crop in on the sensor and you'll get a 5K raw image um, you can only record 8K raw internally you can uh, with the Ninja 5 which is my monitor recorder we'll get into more of that this is what I'm actually doing the recording with basically so let me explain the lens takes in the light the sensor behind this curtain here processes it into a digital image sends it out to this monitor recorder that records it in a very uh, manageable codec and uh, the file is just easy to work with and post things like that very flexible ton of information so um let's build this you can get a r5 for let's see they put out the r5c recently so that probably knocked the price down i think you can get one for about 3500 bucks um it's not cheap but it's not un unobtainable um $3,500, it's worth it, I think. Uh, one of the problems it has is overheating. That's one of the main reasons I use an external recorder. It's got time limits built in because there is some expired legislation. Used to be you couldn't have a photo or hybrid camera record more than 30 minutes of video at a time for some reason. It was just, I don't know, it's stupid. Um, it was used along time for as a way for companies to force you to buy a cinema camera if you wanted to take video seriously uh, and this is a hybrid camera it does shoot photos too so uh, but we got to work around for that no overheating and no time limits when we're recording to the Atmos Ninja so let's build this out what do we need first well this has an RF mount and which is new for the mirrorless line of things. They're RF, R5. Um, I use EF mount, which is their old uh, DSLR glass. I say old, it's just a few years old, it's not that. Um, and I use an adapter that gives me, well, there's a plain one here, but this one has a drop-in variable neutral density filter. I turn this wheel and I can control my exposure with it. Um, a lot of cinema cameras will have them built into the camera. Some of them do not, but they're very convenient. Uh, you need an ND to expose properly in film and in video. Um, the other way to do it is to get like a screw on filter version. This is a ProMIS filter, but they have variable NDs you could screw on the front of your lenses but then you either need different sizes or a whole set of lenses with the same filter size maybe or step down rings or you know something like that this as long as I'm using EF glass I've got a variable ND filter built right in so that's step one uh, step two let's throw a lens on there this we do not need since that's our just our plain adapter with no filter in it. Um, I let's just throw the 
35 millimeter on there. I probably use this more than anything else. Sigma 35 millimeter, one point F1.4 art lens, um, super sharp, clean, contrasty, very clinical image. Um, good color, good contrast, good sharpness, everything very clean. This this is an 85. This is a 35. They're in the same boat. This is a wide angle zoom that I forgot I had and I just found recently and the autofocus is broken and it's it's kind of a piece of shit. And I just ordered a new uh, 14 millimeter cinema lens so I'll be able to get that out of my kit um, pretty soon. This is a vintage Soviet lens from 1983. They made them for decades but this copy is from 1983 uh, from a plant in Ukraine. Um, it uh, is a Helios 44.2. It's a 58 millimeter f2 um, lens. The B clicked aperture. It's a lot of fun. And you pick up a copy for pretty cheap. Um, so yeah. Anyway, throw that on there. So now, I mean, we could run shoot like this. Um, we wanted to we could call it quits there but we're not going to this is a cage it's from UU rig I don't know kind of cheaped out or whatever I, I wish I would have uh, gotten a little bit nicer one this one's fine it just they have ones that fit a little bit better or whatever I don't know. it's you know uh, so that's about $3,500 for a body you're looking at four or five hundred dollars for one of these adapters. This lens is probably like nine hundred bucks, eight or nine hundred. This one's probably around the same, about a thousand ish. You know, something like that. That was a nice lane. My dog just farted, in case you were wondering. Um, so anyway, yeah, this cage is from a company called UU Rig, I guess. Um, most of my stuff is from Small Rig or Tilta is the brand and um, so you'll hear a lot of that. This has a uh, little flathead tool built into it down here. Just magnetize. So you can do that on the fly if you want to. Okay, so now we're in a cage. Next step, top handle. This top handle is from small rig. Comes with an Allen wrench in it. I loosen these I can slide this piece back and forward to get it exactly where I want it it's got a cold shoe mount right here that's a quarter 20 3 8 thread attachments all along the top and the side here already locking pin right there attachment and already locking pin attachment right there which is going to be important for getting our monitor on here and not having to stick it on top you'll see a lot of people have their monitors up on top of their handles and just it seems like a lot I don't know it seems like just uh it's not that big of a difference but it seems like the profile is a lot higher i don't think that makes sense it just takes up a lot more space seemingly now what i need to do when i upgrade this cage is get one with a nato rail and get a top handle with a nato rail as well those essentially you can just clip them on but i almost never take this apart so it's not much of an issue but you know something to consider if you're building out your own rig you might want to get NATO rail in places that you're going to be taking things off and putting them on a good all right so there we have our cage and our top handle getting there we're getting there next um I think I want to put our monitor on next uh, well, let's put our base plate on. This base plate, I think, is actually made for a Sony camera. I think I bought the wrong one. So, it's only got one point of attachment down here. Uh, I can only screw it in one place, so it has the potential to pivot. So, what I did is I put a quarter 20 thread in the top here. That bumps up against the front of the cage there and just keeps it from being able to really move around too much. 
I don't know how well you can see that, but um, so let's see here. All right, base plate. This is a Manfrotto quick release plate. Tripods and all kinds of things use them. I uh, keep this on there and then when I need to, I just pop, you can pop it right on the tripod. Locks in. Quick and easy. Using cool two quarter twenty threads, two quarter twenty screws to tap screws. There we go, we got our base plate on there. adjustment to this top handle. It's not the same brand as the cage, so it doesn't line up exactly perfectly. I'm just gonna slide it over that one. Again. I make it work. Uh I don't know exactly like base plate price. This the quick release plate for the tripod came with the tripod. Uh, you know, I don't know. You got to figure like a hundred bucks for the cage, maybe another 40, 50 for the top handle, maybe another 50 for the base plate, something like that, you know. Uh, now we're going to put our monitor on. This is more than just a monitor. It's also a recorder. It's what's recording our signal. Camera sends it to here. And it records it onto this two terabyte SD drive. And that gives us a ProRes file that is extremely easy to work with, especially if you have a Mac. Now we're using this uh, monitor mount, and it's got this RE locking pin connection here thing that I mentioned on the front of this handle. You'll see there, this has these uh, two pins on the side of the, of the thread there. So it's like a screw with two little locking pins on the side of it to keep it from pivoting. Now we can, you know, get it off into the front of our handle instead of sticking off the top. Get our monitor onto there. Now we're getting somewhere. Starting to resemble the good old camera rig we love and know so much, know and love. Um, so there's a couple ways we can do this. I'll build it out the smaller way first, I suppose, more handheld. Um, the R5. One of the things I don't love about it is it's got a micro HDMI output instead of a full size. It's kind of a pain in the ass, but it is what it is. Um, so we have this little thing here that goes over our input to help help the cords from getting unplugged or bent and broken or whatever. The last thing I want to be doing is recording onto this thing and then something go wrong with my cord and lose the signal and just not be able to record. Just be shit out of luck. So, attach there, we 
push the mic in. Now, after that, side handle. Um, this also comes with the Allen key in the bottom. It's magnetically held in there. Nice. It's from a small rig. You know, I don't know, probably another 50 bucks or so. Um, this uh, attachment, you can loosen these up here and slide this up and down, or I can take it out and flip it around so that it's coming out this side instead. So I can put it on either side I want. I suppose I could even use it as some kind of weird top handle or something, but I like it over here on this side. And uh, when I'm doing run and gun stuff with my microphone on the camera, um, if I have an option, I'll always get the microphone off of the camera onto a boom stand, at least one of them, you know, the more mics, the better, pretty much. But, um, yeah, so when I'm, uh, it has a cold shoe mount on the top here so that when I'm not able to get it off the camera, just a run and gun scenario, I mount it there. The R5 doesn't have XLR audio inputs or anything. It's 3.5 millimeter, like headphone style jack. So it's not as professional as it could be, but it gets the job done. I'm not a sound guy. I'm not an audio guy. That's a whole different gig. I I do what I can, but. Um, all right, so there. Next, I guess we can put our mat box on. Um, Tilto brand mini mat box. Uh, helps protect from glare, and you can put filters in here and stuff if you want. Pop that on there. Something like that. All right. So... Now, if I'm wanting to go handheld, then we're just about ready. Pop a battery in the camera. Pop a battery in the Ninja. And um, this is a follow focus here. I'll, I'll, I'll add that when I uh, build it out bigger. So that is uh, small, broken down the Basic run and gun, ready to go rig. It's not what you'll usually see me with, though. Usually, I'll have it built out bigger. Um, so, that involves rods. mount battery to power everything. But I don't want to worry about these little batteries if I'm going to be running for a long time. What then, Kevin? What then, Redbeard? I'll tell you what. Then, you got to get yourself an external power solution. So, um, I have these 12 inch, 15 millimeter Aluminum small rig rods. I've got some smaller ones too. If I'm not going to put this V-mount on the back, but I still need to mount this follow focus, like if I'm using this manual lens, um, then I'll put these on and attach this to it. You'll understand in a minute, but uh, we don't need these right now. I'll just show you. Now this base plate we attached earlier has um, holes in it for just just this situation. So something like that. Ish. We can find two later. So our base plate for our V-mount battery. Let's slide right here on these, these rails. Take my word for it, that's what I'm doing. Now, there's different ways you could put this on there. I put it on so that when the battery goes on, it'll be like this. 
That way I can lay it backwards flat like this and kind of put it on my shoulder if I want. Um, could turn it this way. And do something like that. But then, you know, you don't have as much room here. I got to get to the screen sometimes to control some of my settings or to help pull focus. If I'm using autofocus, I can tap on, some, tap on somebody's face there, that kind of thing. So I like being able to move this out of my way. So I put it on like so. there. Now that's a 150 watt hour battery on those rails. Next, dummy batteries. This is the dummy battery for our monitor. It's like an NPF style battery. And um, this has on your base plate for your battery here, it's going to have different uh, outputs with different power levels um, that's kind of important um, goes up to 15 volts there's 5 volts 8 volts 12 volts 15 volts or just a DTAP out which is what I'll do for the monitor um, and that's that's fine but um, what you don't want to do is plug your camera into the 15 volt um, output because you can fry that man So let's put our dummy battery in here. And I haven't been real consistent on keep, keeping up with telling you how much everything costs and everything. Um, you can get just a monitor for like five or 600 bucks, but with the monitor batteries, uh, two terabyte SSG D this uh, cable and everything, HDMI 2.0 cable. Uh, the whole kit was about a thousand dollars. All these individual pieces just say like between 50 and 100 bucks for like matte box, probably 100 bucks. Side handle, I don't know, 50 to 100. Cage is about 100. Top handle, you know, 50 100. Back ba battery plate thing, you know, 100 bucks. Uh, the Rode Video Mic Pro Plus is a few hundred dollars, and I can't remember exactly how much. Probably 300 bucks, I'd say. I don't know, something like that. Um, so don't plug this into the 15 millimeter output. I'm gonna wrap it around down here just to get rid of some of the slack. Plug it in, plug it into uh, eight put, eight volt output because that's closer to what your camera needs. It's like seven volts or something like that. It, it works with eight. Okay, so. That is the big rig. And it's about uh, 12 pounds. Especially if I put this big 85 millimeter lens on there. It's not light. I have something called an easy rig. It's like a backpack style strap up thing. And then it has this metal arm that goes above my head. And then a cord cable hangs down and clamps onto here. And I can pull it up and down and it holds it so that the camera basically floats in front of me. And takes all the weight and distributes it to like my hips shoulders kind of mostly the hips and then I, I can just guide it frame it up where I want it. Uh, so there's one piece left that follow focus let me show you what's up with that it's on our Helios 44.2. Very fun lens. Unique. 
Kind of a swirly bokeh. Very cool look. Nice flares. I'm uh, working on getting a whole set of them. They come from Ukraine, actually. They, they make them there, a company called Iron Glass. Well, they rehouse them, put the focus gears on them, clean them up and rehouse them and everything, and get them ready for cinema use. Or they just, uh, they can rehouse them fully. Those are, those are more expensive, uh, you know, like a thousand bucks a piece or so. But, um, I'm just going to get the, uh, versions that have been cleaned up and cinematted is what they call it. So there we go. Now I got my follow focus on there for when I'm focusing manually. Like that. And it's got mm -hmm. some cool little, uh, you can see these knobs sticking off. You can put that down and say, I know I have to rack focus from, from here to there. Well, you can adjust, unscrew that little knob and move it. Say, I want to go from point A. You don't have to go from there at the beginning of the scene to there when the other character walks in. So I can just set that point there and there. Put that latch down and every time when you're done with it, flip it back up, move them wherever you want. So that is a breakdown of my Canon R5 Cinema Rig. Um, I made a video and put it on YouTube a while back, and I was looking at it, it had like couple thousand views so I guess people were interested I thought I would do it again um, that's her in all her glory so that's uh, what it is why it is how much it is all that good stuff um, the whole rig together Thirty-five, forty-five, five, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, six thousand. Six thousand maybe for this, plus about a thousand for each lens. Uh, about eight, eight grand here. About eight grand rig. But um, I could shoot unlimited 10-bit 422 uh, 4K. Um, and what this this actually has an 8K sensor. So when I'm shooting that 4K, what it's actually doing is taking an 8K sample, 8K signal, and downsampling it to 4K. So it's super sharp. It's fucking amazing. Um, it blows normal 4K out of the water. But, um, or I can shoot 8K raw internally. Or, uh, yeah, I Externally, I can get 5K RAW, that's Super 35 mode, cropped in, if I want RAW. That's going to give you the most information, the most latitude and stuff, but most of the time you don't want that. That's just huge file sizes and stuff, so uh, most of the time um, just, I'm just shooting in 422, ProRes 422. Um, it records onto here, 4 bit, 4K HQ, a downsampled 8K image is sometimes it's a little too sharp and got to do things like use vintage lenses or put chromist filters on your lenses to bloom the highlights and soften up the features a little bit so uh anyway you know that that's her i'm just rambling at this point board manic little uh off kilter so thought i'd do this anyway peace